Put your headphones on. You're going to enjoy this. Had so much fun, but now it's your turn to enjoy this conversation. It's a two-part conversation. If you want to see it all uncut and unedited, become a member to the channel. All right. Enough of me. More of my guests. In a TV YouTube podcast. In a TV network. How you doing, Bree? I am doing good. You sure you're doing all right? Over here, yeah. <laughs> I have no rhythm, so I'm like, I don't. No one wants to see that, so I'm, I'm trying to contain myself. <laughs> I don't know about that, girl. You, you, you got. I've seen you. I've seen your channel. So, um, Bree, tell everybody your thoughts when you see this. Well, I'll pop it up on the screen. Imposter mm. syndrome. Give yeah. us your thoughts on that. Yeah. How does that affect self worth? Well, when it comes to imposter syndrome, I mean, first off, it's still, it's a hot button term that everybody's using now. It's like imposter syndrome. You might have imposter syndrome or get over your imposter syndrome and all this other kind of stuff. But no one actually dives deep into what imposter syndrome really is, you know? And so to to like water down the definition, it's basically the inability to acknowledge your accomplishments or your self-worth. You know, it, that's what it all boils down to. And I tell anybody, the moment that you breathe life into this world, the moment that you find yourself in this world, you have self-worth. No, no matter if your parents told you you didn't, no matter if your parents wanted you or not, no matter if if you've made some mistakes, because we all do, you have self-worth. And those mistakes that you've made, they also have worth, you know, because a lot of people can learn from them. You can learn from them. You can you can put a better, you know, self out to the world when you go through these things. And self-worth and imposter syndrome go hand in hand, right? A lot of times when people are suffering from imposter syndrome, they have a false definition of what self-worth is. They believe it's something that they have to strive for, something that they have to um, achieve because that's what society tells us. That's what Instagram tells us. If you don't have the house, if you can't go on the vacations, if you don't have the car, if you don't have the things, if you don't have all the degrees, you don't have any worth. You don't have anything to offer. And that's just not true because no one else is like you, right? Um, on my show, The Real Deal with Brie Clark, we talk all the time about telling people that you are the real deal because that is very true. It's not just a gimmick. It's not just a slogan that we came up with. You are the real deal. No matter where you are today, no matter what's happening today, no, where, no matter where you find yourself today, you are the real deal because there's only one you. There's no one else like you, no one else that has your DNA, no one else that, you know, smiles like you and has, has your teeth, has your fingerprints and other those things. And so that is where your self-worth should, should come from, that there's only one me and no one can offer what I can offer because there is no one exactly like me. And How so, did you get started talking like this? Look at you. Yeah. You're just on a roll. <laughs> you were on a roll. You said my girlfriend. two favorite terms. You said pop syndrome. You said self-worth. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I was like, man, I can't even get in here, man. <laughs> no, that was no, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I just curious, I'm just curious to ask, how did you get started down this journey? Yeah. Being a person who talks about the real deal, self-worth, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Well, I spent a lot of time last decade in television. And um, you're you're asked to have it all together. You know, you're supposed to look the part, talk the part and, and everything. And while most of us, when, when you're seeing us, we're bringing ourselves. Most of us are taught that whatever we're doing, it needs to be better that next time. It needs to be polished that next time. You need to do this better. You need right, to sound, right, right, sound, right. You know, all those Got to be perfect. Gotta yeah, be perfect. yeah, pretty much. And so I remember that... When I really started looking at the people around me, I started realizing we're we're all suffering with, with something. The ones that were honest, you know, about it. We're all suffering with this burnout and this striving and wanting to be. Um, and so I had heard the term imposter syndrome years before, but I'd never really dived deep into it. I didn't do much research. And when I did start doing research, I found out that there wasn't a lot out there. But the little that I did find started helping me put some of these emotions that I was feeling together. You know, um, I had been in TV for a while, um, but realized that that wasn't 100 percent what I wanted to do. It was something that someone told me I'd be good at, but it wasn't necessarily something that 
I um, saw myself doing or saw a lot of worth in, you know, I felt depleted a lot of times at the end of the day. And so um, when I was approached to do a talk show, I said, if it's going to be about anything, it's going to be about imposter syndrome, because there's a lot of people that need to know that this is what they're dealing with. It's not the depression. It's not the anxiety. While these two things may go hand in hand, a lot of people are suffering with imposter syndrome. And if they identify that that is what they're dealing with, it will help them with some of these other things that they're finding themselves dealing with. Okay.